Testing, testing, one, two, are we live? Yes, we are. Okay, hi guys, and welcome back to VR Essentials, where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality and everything about the metaverse. Today, very hot video, as can this laptop, the G8 Fury ZenBook by HP, loaded, packed with an AMD Radeon Pro W6600M graphics card. Oh my God, that's such a mouthful to say, right? Obliterate me and enable me to drive to speeds beyond the speed of light, the speed of sound, all the way into space. That's what we're gonna find out today using the HP Reverb G2 version two and also this amazing app called Cardcraft, which is a, just a bliss. It's an amazing VR car racing sims experience that I just discovered in the last few days. I spent about 10 hours or 12 hours in testing and I will share with you in this video all my settings, including the super sampling in Steam VR, as well as all the in-game settings to the best that I was able to find to get the optimum graphics but the question is can this laptop this vr laptop really handle it and really provide me the experience as it says in the youtube thumbnail and also the youtube title of this video whether it can really do the job really 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 pack a punch or whether you know we have to revert back to the desktop of the rtx 2070 by nvidia that's just what we're going to find out now there are timestamps below i will be using my b camera here my iphone 7 and also of course this camera and recording inside of the laptop, of course. All right, guys, without further ado, let's hop into VR. All right, so before I show you my Steam VR super sampling settings, let's just go into the in-game settings here very quickly and then go to game. Now you will need your mouse pad in order to navigate. It is possible, however, if I just show you to navigate with everything on the wheel itself, no issues there whatsoever. Uh, you can also press a button to select something. However, to go back, I haven't found the ability to bind the button to go back. So you do need your mouse, uh, right click, and then it will go back automatically as so. So I'm not quite sure if you guys find another way for me, you know, leave a comment below. It'd be really good to have your input as to how to bind the back button on the actual G923 by Logitech, which is, by the way, the wheel we're going to be using today. So let's just go back inside of input very quickly. You can choose a wheel or a gamepad or keyboard. Now, I haven't used or tested the keyboard or with the Xbox S controller. For this game, I've only been using the G923 Logitech wheel, and I will give you my impressions, of course, as we go further down the line in this video. Timestamps below in the description too, so you can skip to wherever you want, by the way, FYI. But if you do have a wheel, it is extremely simple to set up. All you have to do is click in the various different boxes here and it will ask you, you know, for example, uh, move your wheel. So as you can see inside of here, it moves left and right depending on the wheel itself. The throttle access, so if I was just to press on the throttle, it should be able to, there we go, it lights up in green. The brake as well, the clutch as well, the gear up and also the gear down. So it's very, very straightforward to set up. Really, there's nothing much to do. Um, to be honest with you, it's very much straightforward. But if we go to the actual game settings and I go straight away to the assist, now you will notice that it says auto upshift and auto downshift. Now for those who are not familiar with go-karting, most go-karts do not have gears. They just don't. So most of the cars inside of the game will not downshift or upshift regardless whether you disable or enable this only only the KZ2 category will enable you to use the gears to upshift or downshift. All the other categories inside of the game will not. It doesn't make a difference. It's all on automatic, just FYI. But you can tune your cars and all these kind of different things. So much you can do is absolutely amazing. Who Those who are you know go-kart enthusiasts or professionals would definitely love the experience here because there is so much tuning that you can definitely do. Now, inside of the actual camera section, uh, to be honest with you, I don't do, uh, you know, I don't do a lot of different things in here. So not much to do uh, whatsoever. If I would just go back into a uh, game here and then go to camera, the only thing you should know is in terms of the FOV, if you are going to change your FOV for playing on the desktop version or the laptop version of VR, then the higher your FOV, everything's going to be further away and look very small because the camera is going to try and get as much of the details on the size inside your, your viewport. So that could, you know, just, 
be be aware of this. But for VR, it's not really going to make that much of a difference, to be honest with you. And then everything else I leave as is. Now, if we go to the actual uh, graphic settings, this is where there's a lot of different experimental things that you're going to need to do. However, the one thing first and foremost that is really going to affect the resolution and also the gameplay inside of the craft card is going to be your resolution scale. Now make sure first of all also that your VSync is disabled as it will create stutter inside of your game and in terms of the full screen you could put this to maybe window mode if you want to access your desktop more easily although you could hit the windows key if you're on a windows of course um, you know to access things but i find that some games is better not to have full screen it's better to have windowed mode now resolution scale i put to one on five now i did experiment a lot as I mentioned in the setup, as I will mention more about this in the setup of super sampling for the Steam VR, do head out to that part or wait for that part as I will talk a lot more about this. But I do find the resolution scale 105 for my settings works perfectly well. And I will talk more when we go to the super sampling of Steam VR as to why it's a 105 and not, let's say, 120 or 80. For the um, AA, uh, the sharpening effects, uh, I leave it on TXAA. I find that this is the best recommended settings. Now, AA quality for the anti-aliasing, I find that Ultra works absolutely fine. View distance, Ultra works absolutely fine. For the shadow quality, now this does eat a lot of computational power. So I do, generally speaking, put this on medium. I don't put this on high. For the post-processing quality, I leave it on Ultra. For the texture quality, I leave it on ultra for the FX quality. Now, generally speaking, I bring this to low because it doesn't matter if I see a lot of dirt or a lot of smoke or something like that. Generally speaking on low, it works perfectly fine inside of VR. It does help me to have a smoother gameplay. Full edge quality, I leave this on high because it's nice to have as much quality as possible in the trees. However, I don't put it on ultra because I don't find that the differences between ultra and high are so great. So, you know, again, to make the the computer work less i leave this on high effectively everything else that is on ultra here i could also bring on high to be honest it doesn't make that much of a huge difference but i leave it on ultra because the graphics um you know as i experimented a lot more with the resolution scale and the super sampling in steam vr it doesn't really affect things so i do leave it on ultra why not right if it's not going to affect this that much for motion blur of course i leave this on zero or it could create some uh, motion sickness dynamic sky update speed i leave this on zero as this can cost a lot of computational power just fyi now the crowd amount is something that can also cause quite some computational power just fyi there i don't want i don't need to see so much crowd in the stands all this kind of stuff some people yes because of course it provides more immersion but by leaving it at 45 percent, i found that for me was the sweet spot now if you have a better graphics card of course then you know bump it up as much as you want but i'm just saying that for me below 40 50 percent worked better and it still provided me good immersion there in terms of the gameplay now for the fps i leave it on 90 why well because the hp reverb g2 headset the maximum it can render is 90 frames per second so therefore why make the computer work harder when it doesn't need to with a vr headset it's really that simple so i leave it to 90. the sharpening will be very much based on your own personal preferences i find and also depending on the resolution scale and the super sampling um you know options that you take there also i find that the sharper it is it might create some stutter or it might just look too crisp and you have a lot of jagged edges now i would say that perhaps 150 could also be a good setting although it could render things to look a little bit more blurry depending on your resolution scale of course and your super sampling in steam vr um so i found that for me 180 or 195 works best uh the default is 200 but you know you will need to experiment a little bit 
bit more there. These are my personal settings. And for HDR, I leave this off. Now do make sure that if you do make the changes whilst you're in the game itself, to hit the apply button. As I mentioned, you can use the steering wheel here at this moment in time, you know, and then you can hit the X button or depending where you set it on your actual steering wheel to click the apply. Because if you don't hit the apply and you just go back, even though it says saving the settings, it won't actually save those specific graphic settings in the game. So make sure to hit the apply button before you head back. All right, so by the way, it's going to be very interesting to see how the app will react with all these lights shining on me. The microphone you can hear now is coming from the HP Reverb G2 VR headset. I just want to show you very quickly the super sampling and talk to you about this as to why I chose a specific setting and not another setting. Um, so we go to video settings and we go to car craft, which is here. Now the optimum settings that I found that works best with CarCraft using the G8, um, you know, Fury ZenBook laptop with the AMD Radeon Pro W6600M graphics card, wow, that is a mouthful to say, um, is actually around the 128% mark, even though it is less, as you can see, than the recommended 4K per eye. It's simply because in the game, when you choose the resolution scale, by bringing it up and by bringing the super sampling down, I'm gonna have a better graphics card performance, first of all, in terms of frames per second, and also my graphics themselves are gonna look much, much better and much sharper. I found that if I was to bring this up all the way to let's say 200% or 300% or 400% and I brought down the resolution scale inside of the app, then actually everything would look more blurry and also my frames per second performance was much it was more compromised so the game wasn't as smooth. Now the other thing you need to do is go to mixed reality here, go to graphics and make sure that your motion vector with the AMD Pro graphics card, I find that it makes a world of difference to have this on, but with NVIDIA RTX uh, 2070, of course, I need to disable it as it is the opposite. It creates more jitter and more jagged edges and things and less smooth gameplay. But with the AMD Radeon Pro, I need to switch this on in order to have a smoother gameplay. So that is very, very interesting. And if there are any other tips or tricks that you guys can recommend, because I'm still learning about how to use an AMD Pro Radeon graphics card, then please, by all means, leave them in the comments below so we can all learn from you guys. All right, so once this is done, I just basically, oh, wrong app. We just basically launched the app and I'll see you in Cardcraft in just a moment. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to just go to shop very quickly. And I'm gonna show you that, you know, there are a whole heap of different cars that you can purchase. There's a lot of different manufacturers here. And of course, as the game progresses, they're probably gonna add more and more and more of them. So for example, you can go into Praga. Now you're not able to use a controller in order to move the actual car around at this moment in time. But what you can do is you can press, basically you have to go back to your mouse, uh, actually the keyboard this time, and press X or Y. So X will move it in this direction. And then Y will move it, well normally Y is supposed to move it in the other direction. But the graphics are using the Unreal Engine. So it's not your Mario Go-Kart kind of 3D arcade kind of feel. It's more of a hyper-realistic kind of feel. Now the graphics remind me more of Dirt Rally, um, you know, and also Assetta Corsa Competizione. There are a few jagged edges here and there. It's not super, super clear, but it's definitely good enough to know, of course, what you're looking at and giving you that sense of excitement into, you know, wanting to go and race. So let's get out of here. And then now let's go to pits. Now inside of the pits, you can change absolutely everything. You can go and check out your cards, of course, see the various different cards that you have. And you can go inside of setup and you can basically, well, normally you would be able to change various different things. You can actually go into tuning and change absolutely, absolutely everything here, uh, including the front end. You can also change in the driver, you can change the seat position, the drivetrain, the rear, the brakes, and also, of course, the tire 
uh, set up as well. So there's a lot of different things that you can actually tune to your heart's desire. And you can also save the setup so you can load them up later on. Uh, you can also change the parts uh, of the actual car. So you can purchase different things and customize it as your heart's desire, really. So it's absolutely amazing in terms of the level of detail that you can do in here. You can also rename rename your, yourself. Um, you can also change a whole bunch of different things. So I'll let you go inside of the game as to what you can change because it's just phenomenal the amount of things you can you can do inside of you know of this game. Uh, you can also change the teams you're in and also the gear. So for example, the gear that I purchased is a drone so they can record me and play uh, you know your you can actually see your your game uh, after you finish the race if you wanted to see your performance and all these kind of different things. You can change a driver as well. So a lot of different things you can do. And then inside of a drive, you can practice. Now, if you want me to do another video for multiplayer, because I haven't tried it yet, do hit the likes and the notification bell to be notified of that video. If we reach more than 20 or 30 likes, I will do a, sp a special video only with multiplayer to show you what it's like inside a multiplayer. But today we're going to focus more on the actual race. So you can choose your map. So we will do, we'll go to, let's say, this map here. Now, as I mentioned with KZ2, that's where you can change the actual gears of the car. But just to make it a little bit easier today, we're going to go to the KA100. And then we're going to go backwards and then start the event. And then we're going to choose the Monaco car. It's a pretty cool car. Dry setup, is that all, that's all we have now and then drop inside of the game. And remember, you can hit the space bar uh, to reset the position of your actual car, just FYI. And also here, you can also do more vehicle setup if you wish, or to load a specific setup that you may have saved previously. All right, let's go. All right. Ooh. All right, so the car is actually driving pretty smoothly so far. All right, let's do this. Woo! Everything's on automatic, so I haven't tuned the gears and all these kind of different things, but as you can tell, the gameplay is pretty smooth so far. There's no, there's no jitteriness going on or anything like that. The frames per second are going okay, but I have to admit that the uh, motion vector is causing a little bit of issues in terms of when I look at the actual competitors at the front, they they kind of jagger a little bit. So what you can do to minimize this, of course, is to go inside of your Steam VR settings and then just change the settings. So I'm I'm just going to wait for them to come back to me, and then I'll show you what it looks like in just a moment. So as you can see now, the cars are much smoother when they pass me, and when I move my headset, I don't have any. Um, very you know weird things going on artifacting or something on the actual competitors go karts because when I put the motions moving on I do see some artifacting going on there even though the gameplay is much smoother with motion vector on it just means that I get a better view of the actual competitors so that is the difference between turning on motion vector and switching it off so I'm just following the competitor here in front the gameplay is very real. Now, of course, if my skills were much better, I would be able to follow them in a much easier way. All right, so motion vector is now enabled again, and I'm just waiting for the cars to come back so I can show you the differences when I'm looking at the actual competitors in terms of when I move my headset and try to show you that artifacting I was trying to talk about just now. All right, so now we've switched on motion vector once more, and I just want to show you what everything looks like when it's switched on. So when I move my HMD, my headset, my VR headset, everything is pretty smooth. Everything is pretty OK. Uh, nothing is really you know, happening in terms of the graphics. Everything is working like it should. And the realism is absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing, I have to say. And even though I can't see the things at the far, you know, where the trees are completely you know, clear, it doesn't really matter because everything that is near me is clear and that is really what my eyes are focusing on. So that's why there is that compromise in terms of graphics, but at the end of the day, it's still very playable and still really 
Really good fun. So, guys, I just wanted to show you this app because, honestly speaking, I really do feel that the VR laptop is performing quite well compared to the previous video we did. And do go and check out that video all about After the Fall. And I talk about the pitfalls in After the Fall and how it performs in After the Fall VR. So do go and check that video after this video if you want more details in terms of how the AMD graphics card, the Radeon Pro W6600 Pro card, you know, handles there because in this specific app i have to say if if i was only if i only had this laptop as an option and no desktop or no more powerful cards or whatever you know what have you not i have to say that this card is performing absolutely fine for this kind of game here without a doubt all right so for the purpose of this recording i'm going to use my aunt leon microphone simply because I want you guys to be able to hear the engine because the sound effects in this game are absolutely phenomenal. It really provides a sense of realism that is absolutely, absolutely insane. And then the other thing is, if you find that you are, you know, not centered in the actual game itself, what you actually need to do is hit the space bar and not, funny enough, the Steam VR reset the position of the headset uh, because it simply won't work. And also, it will tell you from time to time if you're stuck here and there. Uh, because there is no reverse in most of these gold cards. So you just hit the space bar and it will bring you directly uh, on the actual track itself. Now, we are running with the Logitech G923 uh, wheel and the pedals as well. And everything is actually super responsive. So we're just going to, to go very quickly. Now, before we go, I just want to show you the level of the graphics, which to me remind me a lot of Dirt Rally and also Aceta Corta Competizione. Um, now this game is, you know, a couple years old. They do update it every month. And I have to say that, of course, the graphics now, I am with the AMD Radeon Pro. I haven't tested it yet on the RTX 2070 FYI. So do hit the likes and also the notification bell after you subscribe to, you know, if we manage to get to more than 20 or 30 likes, I'll do a separate video using the RTX 2070 to show you some comparison footage in the future. But what I was trying to explain to you in terms of the resolution scale, it really is the, the thing that is going to impact the graphics the most in terms of what you can see. Now, for me, at the moment, everything looks okay. It is true that at the far back, I mean, at, at, at the forefront where the trees are over there, I can still see details in them. But it is true that they're slightly a little bit blurry. Everything that is near me, of course, is super sharp. The graphics, there are no jagged edges. Absolutely, everything is great. The only jagged edges that I can see is basically at the edges of the road there a little bit, and also at the very, very far back over there. Now, the balloon to me looks a little bit blurry, to be honest with you, and also the yellow uh, gazebo over there looks a bit blurry to me. But everything else that is near me or midpoint is absolutely sharp. There's no issue with that. And also now what we're gonna do is just start driving a little bit. You can see that the gameplay is very smooth, but there's a lot of experimenting you're gonna to have to do in order to get your sweet spot between getting the total FPS, you know, in, in making sure that the game doesn't lag in any way, there's no latency in any way, and also making sure that your graphics are as sharp as possible. You're just gonna to have to do a lot of it different experimentation. And this is where I was trying to explain to you guys that the Steam VR super sampling settings, by lowering those, I can then, you know, up the settings of the resolution scale inside of the game itself and get that compromise because at the end of the day, I'm not gonna be able to get super, super sharp uh, resolution graphics inside of this game whilst also having super smooth gameplay you know it's just not possible so i had to compromise and at the end of the day as far as i'm concerned as someone who has spent thousands of hours inside of vr i can tell you right away that it really does not bother me um the game f1 2022 which came out recently you know you do know from the previous video and do go and check out that previous video i did a live stream more than two hours long and i also did another video which was all about why did i request for a refund but in this game, as far as I'm concerned, I do not want to refund. The graphics are good. They're good enough for me to have a really good experience in VR. Is it perfect? No, it's not. But at the end of the day, it's more than good enough to give me a really amazing sensation in that inside of this game. It's just phenomenal. I mean, the sound, just listen to this engine. All right. 
Okay, so first of all, the sound of the tires are absolutely phenomenal. They really do sound like tires that screech when you're doing like a hard turn like this and also the sound of the engine. Let me just do another hard turn so you can hear the tires again as to how nice they sound. You know, absolutely amazing. I love the smoke effects and, you know, all these little twigs of branches that appear and all this kind of stuff. Let's do another twirly. I mean, you can really hear the grass as well once you're on the grass and you're doing some kind of twirly or something. I mean, the sound effects in this game have really, really been thought out in a big way and really do provide, you know, a lot of the immersion inside of here. And there are some tracks which are really, really difficult, I have to admit. So there's a lot of different, you know, gameplay options uh, inside of here. But when it goes fast, it's just crazy. Just listen to this engine. 